Welcome to the channel, everybody. My name is Barry. Welcome back to Huang Bros. Welcome to Huang Bros. If you're new to it, today I have my friend Juan. He's gonna help me out today. Uh, today, it's actually pretty interesting. Today we're gonna do a science experiment with the car. Specifically, with titanium brake shims, right? Titanium brake shims. There are a lot of people that are curious about whether brake shims, these titanium brake shims, work or not. Because specifically, titanium is better with heat thermal conductivity. Um, it'll conduct it and disperse the heat a lot better. So where the brake shims goes is between the brake pad and the brake caliper. If the heat stays in here and stuck in here, it will not go to the brake caliper and then therefore the brake fluid that's in the brake caliper won't get heated up and therefore you won't get brake fade. So ideally, titanium brake shims ideally will give you less brake fade and that's what we're gonna try to see if it works today. So today, my friend Juan, he's got himself a thermal gun. Uh, infrared thermal gun, the link for the product will be below. What are you reading? Uh, 72, okay. Yep. So again, we're gonna test these out. How we're gonna do so is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive around, we're gonna break, and then we're gonna measure the temperature of the caliper, and then we're gonna go change and install these, and then we're gonna drive around again and see if there's a temperature change. All right, guys. All right, we're in the car, let's start it up. Okay, we're gonna drive around. I'm um, hoping enough to drive around enough to get enough heat into the brake caliper, and then we're gonna measure that temp, and then after that, we're going to uh, install it, and then just drive around again and see if it works. For me to get the brakes to be heated up, I do got a brake. Oh, uh, you guys hear that? That's a. I think uh, it means I almost have to change my brake pads. How do you feel about the brake right now? Uh, talking about the brake pedal feel? Um, yep. I mean, it's still squealing, <laughs> like I said before, but uh, ultimately, I think it's probably because we just warm, we just started the car. The brake pedal feels very firm, as we, as we uh, hope. But there's times where I will, I know if I keep driving, the, the, the brake pedal won't feel as firm. And then I think uh, these titanium shims will probably solve the issue because it's less heat, right? Less heat, less brake fade, but we'll see. We have been braking all around uh, the, like city blocks and we're going to eventually stop here in a little bit and we're gonna measure the temperature of the brake rotors, I mean the brake calipers, and then we're going to uh, install them. All right, we're here. Let's get the temperature. <sighs> so caliper is reading 72. Rotor is reading at first something really high. 94. I mean, I'm only in the city. I didn't drive that much, but I drove around for a good 10 minutes. Let's check the other side. Okay, so 66, 65, 68, 66, 7. So let's say average of 67. And we got 75, 76. So we do know that the brake caliper is a lot less uh, hot than the rotor which is what we expect, right? That's what we expect, because heat dissipates. So one more thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the temperature of the brake fluid just to see what I can get it. I'm reading 100 to see different spots. So I see it's average about 100. So far I've got 100, 907. So it's kind of weird, it's 100 towards the driver's side, but 107 on the passenger side. Are looking good. Low car problem. So my car is so low that I'm gonna have to do something that I haven't done in a long time. Just take off my side skirt. Bam. Okay, now that we've accessed the brake calipers, we remove the the caliper bolt, retention pins, remove the brackets. First step is me to 13 millimeter. The bolts right here, lefty loosey. We got the carter pins out. Now we gotta get these brake pad retention things out. And then we gotta get the caliper bolts out. Now we're gonna need to take the old brake pads out and then match up the uh, titanium shims to it. Now we're gonna remove this brake pad. Now we got ourselves a steel shim 
but we're replacing it with titanium today so take the brake pads out oh I still got some life left but take the brake pads off take the shims off get the other one off and then I'm gonna put on the new titanium shims so to remove this you might need to push this in create space and then pull it out it's all you need is just the steel shim so if you can remove this you're good to go no need to remove any of this now I'm gonna put this back and all I need is one brake pad and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the rest of the titanium shims fit to this. So like I said, we're gonna replace it with titanium shims today. So we're gonna remove the steel ones and put on the titanium ones. But you'll notice that these are straight. They're not curved like this. So we need to make them match. So we got to align the holes and then we're gonna hit, we're gonna hit it until this thing curves inwards. If that doesn't work, you can always use these pliers. All I'm doing is just shaping this. So I'm ensuring all the caliper retention, the, the uh, cotter pin holes are still good to uh, align. Okay. Now I'm using pliers and we're gonna bend this until it's good. Good to go. That's all we need it for. An actual easier method is just honestly use your pliers, grab it at the tip here and then just bend it. Um, afterwards, you just match it to the brake uh, pad. It's pretty good. And then, honestly, just honestly, just beat the rest of it in. And it's okay if this doesn't perfectly hook on. It just needs to stay. The caliper, uh, the cotter pins will hold this in. But now you do have to ensure that it's all the way in though. So you still gotta do this. But it's just quicker to do it with pliers and then just beat the rest of it in. And now to the last one. All you gotta do, plier, and then just bend it. And now, oh look at that, perfect fit. Okay, this one works. This one works. This one works. And this one works. All right, now it's time to put everything back together. Put them in the back and then reinsert. You may need to make more space between the, the pistons, but all you gotta do, just use your hands, push it back. That's all you gotta do. Voila, problem free. And now we gotta get the backside. Get that out, push the calipers, pistons in. Okay, that's enough space. Now we just gotta grab a titanium shim, put it in the back. Okay, we have it in. Now I'll put the sensor wire back in. They're good to go. Okay, now that everything's back together, we're gonna put the caliper bolts in. Be careful not to scratch your paint. If you have a painted caliper, you might need to hit it in a little bit. If not, it's the brake pads. Okay, there we go. With the 13, put it back into the back end. Of course, we're gonna tighten it down. For the cotter pins, we have to put the brake pad retention brackets. So it's gonna be under. Now we have the cotter pins to put in. It's from the back side going in. Make sure you get that in through there. Now this part, if it doesn't align with the hole, push from the brake pad in the, in the front here, push it forward to get the, the hole to be aligned. And you might have to hit this in. All right, it is going through. Again, push on the brake pad from the front and hit it in. And just like that, it comes through. We have one side in. And now it's time to work on the other side. That's one. That's two. There's a lot of salt from the East Coast on here. The brake pad retention brackets. Voila, the caliper pistons. All right, this comes out. New one goes on. It should smoothly go in like so. If not, that means your caliper pistons are too far forward. Feel the move. Remove the old one. Put the new one in. And let's put it back in. Just like that, it should go in. Caliber bolts. 
brackets. Look at all this rust. Goes upwards. And then we put the contrafins back from up top. Again, if, it, if you meet this issue right here, where it's not uh, it's touching, push from back here, push the brake pad forward, and then put the rest in. Got the two 13 millimeters that goes behind the caliper bolt. First time go. Nice. There is definitely a different feel to when you're applying the brake pressure. Uh, it, I, don't, I don't want to say it's mushy, but you can feel something different. We are doing a drive after installing, but we are going to stop soon after I break enough times to generate enough heat. Now I'm gonna measure the brake fluid in the underneath the hood, and I'm gonna measure the temp of everything else. Wow, 106, 76, let's see, any improvement? Well, definitely the brake rotors are a lot hotter. So in the beginning, the temperature was 46, uh, out exterior right now is about 52 I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it or it could be that I drove a lot or I broke I braked a lot harder let's see what the other side is so that was an average of 83 okay we got 79 80 78 79 okay let's check under the hood all right, got my thermal gun. It's reading at 117. Hmm, maybe what I had before was better. Okay, well, that's 123. It's definitely getting hotter. My final thoughts on the titanium brake shims in the front. You know, I do feel a little bit differences. I feel some difference when I brake, um, but you won't really feel it the, until you go to the track. And that's where I'm gonna take this thing eventually to uh, another track in a different country. So far, the temperatures of the caliper and the brake fluid, it's about the same, but that's because I'm driving around in the city. If I was to go to uh, the track, I definitely would feel a difference. But right now in the in-city, I'm not gonna really feel anything other than the same because I haven't really gotten enough, um, haven't really driven around enough to generate that much heat. One thing I could do better is, you see it right there? It's not fully uh, grabbing or not fully conforming around the brake pad. Same as the bottom one down there, but it's okay. I could probably use something and hit it in right now or if I wanted to. All right, guys, that's concludes today's video. I hope you found it somewhat entertaining or somewhat helpful, or if not, I hope I brought some, shed some light on the product itself. The product to the, uh, the link to the product will be in the description below, or just visit RR Racing, titanium brake shims. They are 110 bucks, not as much brake fade, and it's titanium. Well, one, you're not gonna really see it other than that, so. It's not burnt like people want it, but they could make it burnt if you ask for them, I guess. But really no need because you can't really see it other than there. But other than that, I hope again, I hope you guys found this video entertaining or something or shed some light. That's me today's video. So if you can, please like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you next video. Peace.